I have with me Anthony and Sarah. Um, I know of them through Holy Script Clothing. We'll come to that later. Uh, but I got to see some of your stuff through a guy called Pete Baker, who I also don't really know. I just know <laughs> of him. So um, just tell us a brief bit about who you are. Okay, so I'm Anthony, and this is my wife, Sarah. Um, referring back to Pete Baker, we met Pete Baker just over 12 months ago um, when we attended Life Church for the first time. Um, and Pete and his wife are the two pastors there. Cool. And I saw Holy Script clothing. I know that comes out of a journey, but just tell us some of the journey, because I know you're, you're recently um you're christians recently through life church as you say which is fantastic but what's the story to that how how did that come about why are you suddenly going to a church what, what's your story um so last year april last year um i lost my big sister to um to murder um and along after along came after that um was a lot of mental health issues um, suicide thoughts, the suicidal attempts throughout the family um, and we got stuck at a loose end, we didn't know what to do, we didn't know where to go, didn't know what help to get and then Anthony come up thought of an idea as he was driving. I was driving along one day li listening to the radio uh, in the car racking my brains thinking what do we do, how do we, how do I help the family and I just had it just Live church, and I run Sarah straight away. I was like, We need to go to live church, I think it's got everything we need. Um, and we went, and it, it did as soon as we got there, it felt like home, everybody was so welcoming. And then through the faith and just everybody else being so positive, it's helped us massively as a couple and as a family. That's yeah. so beautiful that you said it, it felt like home. That's, uh -huh. I mean, uh, you know, I've been in full time ministry, and that that's the dream, that's the goal. You want people to arrive and think, I've come home. And that, that was your experience, yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So um, you, you say you've got everything you needed. What is it you were searching for? I mean, you, you've talked about the dark thoughts. You talk about suicidal thoughts. You talk about this place. So I'm I'm sort of guessing a little bit because I haven't met you before today, but you, you're kind of stuck in this cycle of <laughs> how do we move forward? We, we're in this place. How do we get out of it? And, and, and this idea of church came. Yeah, so I think as us as a family, we needed something that kind of, united us and give us a new direction a new something to focus on and um, so even with the the church and the community spirit that they've got so all the community events that they have uh, the grocery store and um, helping people out on the streets and things like that it's something that we could redirect our kind of and channel our thoughts and start helping other people um from there positively, positively really yeah and kind of yeah um so that's kind of where it helps really yeah well, i'm so sorry about the loss of your uh, family member i mean that's just that's heartbreaking that's tragic um uh, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that are, are, you, are, you, are you happy to sort of share some of what's gone on with that it's okay if you're not i'll, I'll let you do that because i'll be an emotional yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah so um so obviously we lost um katie in september uh sorry mm -hmm. april last year um to uh, the hands of her abuser, um, which again, it's it was heartbreaking for us. Um, we knew she'd gone missing for a week. We didn't know where she was. Uh, we couldn't find her. The police eventually found her. Um, and her abuser has now been sent down for 32 years, um, life imprisonment um, for that. Um, but it affected us all. It's affected Katie. Katie left two children behind as well. Uh, so it affected them, it's affected our children, it's affected us, it's affected Sarah's sister, Sarah's mum, and the, just the whole family, really. So it's it's finding, it's it's now, we through what we've experienced, we're now trying to find a positive outcome to it. Um, and if us by promoting the Holy Script and getting the message out that faith can help, if we can turn one person to faith and it gives them the confidence to walk away from an abusive relationship or it can give or it can stop an abuser being an abuser because they find faith then we've done our job by just saving one life really and that's where we want to try and keep katie's name 
alive, but stops anybody else from having to suffer it, really. Sure. It's, I, I, I sort of get um, an element, tiny element of that, because we lost our daughter uh, yeah. when she was about 11 weeks. So her name lives on through us, you know? So although yeah. the death yeah. is tragic, there there is a route whereby the memory actually lives in a slightly yeah. bigger way. So like the, with the radio stuff, with we do a, a video ministry, all that came out of live for today because you don't know what's coming tomorrow. And that's what we take from our daughter who we never got to meet. But out of that, um, which was a dark time too, so that I get one small element of what you've been through, something good yeah. came out of it. I, I love this story of redemption that you're talking about, really, of how you were stuck, it was dark, but the, the light came in. I mean, for you, yeah. uh, Anthony, it was, it was a voice through a radio show, you say, effectively, to, to get to a church, and that's that's beautiful. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I was brought up as a Christian. I was brought up in a Christian family church every Sunday, went to a Christian high school, and then as you do late teens, 20s, kind of walked away from the faith and did, did life as such. Um, but, and that, I think it is that foundation, isn't it, that if, it, once you've had that, your faith, even if you do walk away from it, you know that you'll, it's always there because you know that a lot, it, it's there to fall back onto and kind of pick you back up when you need it. Cool. So, okay. Um, the, the dark moments happened dark last year. You've got this tragedy to try and do. You've got children to try and talk to. Um, again, that's that's the one bit I can kind of understand <laughs> more, only a little bit, because we had two children. And how do you deal with two children plus tragedy? And yeah. so I sort of, you know, I understand a small part of that. Trying Very to be small. strong. Yeah, you're trying to be strong because you don't want the kids to. So, it, yeah. I think we're trying to be strong for everybody else yeah. as well. Yeah. My, first, my little sister and my mum and Katie's children, as well as just trying to. And I would talk to you. Yeah. But in the middle of all that, we've also we also had a wedding to plan. We yeah. were getting married wow. that September. Um obviously with everything that had gone on with Katie, we had a three month that block. We, we didn't plan anything for three months to the point where we nearly cancelled the wedding. Um because it got took to trial. So Katie's abuser wanted to take it to trial because he said it was an accident. It, it wasn't um, done on purpose, but it, it was it was premeditated. So we wanted to take it to trial in November. Um, so my mum said to us one day, no, we get you getting married. This is the one last thing we've got to look forward to, something happy before we get with an out there again in November. So we had the stress of yeah. planning a wedding <laughs> in, in less than eight weeks. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, so out of all that darkness, we've got um, what I see as a beautiful thing in Holy Script Club. We'll come back onto that, but I, ju yeah. I just wanted to come back to that that difference that you've you've had darkness to the church and that that faith that you talk about and wanting to help others. I mean that I get that uh, I really do. But but what how how would you best describe the difference between the darkness of last year before faith became a big part of your life? So when faith was really helping you to have a different perspective on life, how would you best best kind of talk about that difference? Um, I don't know. Would you it's, grab that? It's, I think it's just easier. It's knowing that God in Jesus is always there, whatever whatever the problems, and just every, every day just becomes easier. And we, it, and again, and it is. It is, it is it is God. You can see God doing what he needs to do because it's the people that he's put his with. It's the people within the church. It's the people within that community that are being stronger for us and helping us. But it's only God that put us in that place. If it wasn't for God, then people wouldn't be there. Um, and it just... We have, a, we have a more positive outlook on that now, don't we? We do. Um, and kind of... It's... It's now trying to make everything better rather than kind of thinking, well, what if, what if we'd have done this? What if we'd have done that? We can't, we can't do anything about the what ifs. We've put our control into God's hands. Yeah. Wow. Because if we try and control, it just makes things a lot worse, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, <laughs> yeah. I can definitely, <laughs> I definitely get that part. I know what it's like to uh, think, no, no, it's all right, God, I've got this. I've got the plan sorted. Just, you know, yeah. give me a green tick and we're good to go. And, and, and you, you know afterwards that, God's plan is better. Um, but I'm loving the story of redemption of how you've gone through darkness, you found church, you found faith, and now you're trying to turn that around because I guess my way of saying what you're saying is 
rather than looking down at your feet, you're looking up and trusting God with your steps. Would that be yeah. about right? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. My favorite uh, scripture at the moment is Romans 8, 28. It works all things good for the bad that's happened to us and for people that love him. So that for me, it shows no matter what, he, Katie's abuser did to us, it was the most horrific thing anyone could go through. Um, he's Jesus and God turns that around for our good and makes it good for us. So that's our positive wow. look on yeah. life as well. Okay, we'll come back to that one in a bit. Um, Holy script clothing. So that's what you've gone yeah. on to do. Just tell us a story of wh where did that nugget of an idea come from? How are you developing in that? And, and where's that going, do you think? Uh, it started, so when we started La Church, we then joined La Group. So it's a group of people from the church. They're all in separate little groups. Um, so we joined a La Group and we joined the Talking Jesus course. And one of the sessions on Talking Jesus course was about Christians unable or scared to open up and talk about Jesus to non-Christian friends and family and how that how can they do that without getting a bit well not abused but not people not wanting to listen to women not, yeah not taken seriously so yeah. uh, we was sat there one night after that session when we got home and I just said t-shirts and I knew it well I went clothing t-shirts scriptures on it Get it out there, people will read it and it'll just break that ass to talk about Jesus and fear without being judged or anything like that. Sort of a question starter. <laughs> Start starting a conversation, yeah? That sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Or an for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we, we need those, don't we? It's, it, it can be really hard yeah. to say, do you know what? I love Jesus Christ, and and that can be um really hard. But do you know there's other ways of saying the same thing through who we are and what we are and what we do. And that's obviously what you're doing in your life. But Holy Script Clothing. So, I mean, I think I read that, is it um, your daughter, did they get that right? She's a lot of the sort of ideas for the graphics. Is that right? Yeah, so our daughter, Roxanne, she's 16. She does um, She does all the designs. We'll give her the scriptures and then she'll just do, do the designs. Oh, I love a family business. I love a family thing. It's really, really good. Uh, we do that. We're a whole family ministry. So berrybunch.org yeah, so is what we do. Right. I think Sarah does. Sarah would, I would say, is in charge of the social media. Yeah. Um, I'm in charge of the website, um, and then Roxanne's in charge of doing all the designs. So. And then, and then our two boys, Braden and Bobby, are the the wearers. <laughs> they 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 show our show our the pictures. And, yeah, they're our models. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful model of a family doing stuff for God. It's great. Uh, right, let's just come back to um, what I was reflecting on. So Holy Script Clothing came out of effectively something dark, but you've got something to, to grow forward. So I'm guessing for you, in a sense, every time you sell a T-shirt or whatever, that, that's kind of your sister's life living on. Is, is that a way of looking at it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's trying to kick... Every, every time there's a T-shirt sold, somebody will then wear that T-shirt who will then start a conversation that will hopefully say, oh, it's this family that started this business selling me, and this is their story. Um, and then hopefully can't it, the story keeps rolling and kind of passes on. Um, and one, to let people know about faith and how it can help, um, even when you th think you're in your darkest times. Um, but also about the domestic violence. And one thing we are quite strong on is... Um, talking about the Claire's, Claire's Law, which a lot of people don't know about, um, which anybody can request a, a police report for anybody's criminal activities of somebody who gets with, within a new partner. Um, so then if, if you've got any uh, kind of problems um, or worries about that person, um, so then you can let the person know that they might not be a good person. Um, and again, it's just passing on that message of, you don't have to be, you don't need to keep yourself in that position. You can kind of get out of it and there'll always be someone there to help you. There's a way out. And God gave you a way out of some of your difficulties through Life Church, which is brilliant. Um, yeah. I just wanted to come back. It's an obvious question I'm going to have to ask, but what would you say to people who are going through a dark time, perhaps um, an unwanted pregnancy or uh, a murder like you went through or um, an unfaithful partner? There are so many kind of our top 10 worst possible, you know, scenarios. 
and I would say murder is probably <laughs> somewhere pretty high on that list. But what would you say to somebody who is facing this and thinking, I, I just, I don't know what to do. What's my next step? Life is dark, which is where we are. What, what, what encouragement can you give to someone in that, in that place of life? Pray for them. <laughs> I'll, keep, yeah, them. I'll keep, keep praying and keep praying and, and talk and try and, and talk to people. Don't just talk, just keep it to yourself. Voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a scripture in that um, where, where light is, darkness cannot be. Light extinguishes the darkness. And, you yeah. know, the, the, the devil, the enemy, he's a real uh, a thing. We we believe that. And he's going to try and operate in darkness and try and pull us yeah. into darkness. But Jesus wants to bring light into our lives. And it's so exciting and encouraging chatting to you guys because you've been in the darkness and yet you've turned the light on. And we don't always make that choice, do we? We sometimes think, I'll stay in the dark. It's a bit easier. But, you know, you, you've made that decision and we can see that in you. So, um, Thank you for sharing some of that. But um, Holy Script, just give us some more about the Holy Script clothing. What what can we know about that? What's what's your, some of your favourite t-shirts or scriptures that you've got? Have you got well, a favourite? Man's, man's Romans eight twenty eight. Yeah. Uh, my daughter wears that all the time. She's got a jumper, um, and it's on the back. I can't remember what sort of design she's put for that one. I think it's like a flowery, flower beautiful design. Um, and I think yours is the one that you're wearing now. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got any there um, to show us? Any, any t-shirts? Yes, we are wearing one. So I've got a few. Oh, cool. 319, you are loved beyond measure. Cool. The, the white because it likes. So this yeah. is what Holy Script clothing does, right? You make t-shirts with scriptures with a sort of a picture to, yeah. to highlight and the scripture. So we, yeah. Yeah, so we've, we've come up with some designs ourselves, um, or so, some of the scriptures, um, and then with within the church community, um, people have asked us that they want a t-shirt making with their favourite um, verse on. So we've been given the verse and then Roxanne goes away and scurries away and on her iPad and makes the design up. Um, and then we ask the person if they like it and then they do. So then we put it onto the clothing um, for them to then buy. But then we, we also make it available for anybody else to buy as well. So. Nearly every T-shirt or every item of clothing that we're selling has got a story behind it because either one of the verses has got a meaning to us or it's got a meaning to somebody else within our church community. Wow. Um, but even even as a as a wider thing, if anybody listening to this wants a scripture making, then they can email us through the website and we can design something. So everything is tailor-made to everybody, but then it is also available for anybody else so your design will then be worn by somebody else as well i love how an idea sparks an idea which sparks an idea and it just grows doesn't it that's brilliant yeah well I, well I, as we've just been talking that it's just sparked another idea in my head as well <laughs> that whoever then designs that t-shirt if they tell their a little bit of their story that story could go out with that design every time it's bought for their story to be passed on as well which is just an already that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no definitely yeah. thumbs up for me on that one that's a really good um that's that's the point of conversation though isn't it that's about coming out of the darkness into the light is that we we can see more yeah. things literally I mean, it's just it's, it's that simple yeah. um give us your website at this point just so we don't forget what is the how do we get hold of you on your website uh so it's www.holyscript.co.uk fine and we'll we'll push that out as well when we uh we put this video out as well um, I'm so uh, blessed in, to talk to you. I, I, I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to talk to people and, and they tell me their story and I love it because I can sit and listen all day long. I can talk all day long as well, but I love the story. So thank you for sharing some of that. I know some of that was quite hard. And um, we had somebody from Canada get in touch who says, oh, when's yeah. the video, when's it going out? I, I'm the aunt from Canada. So that was cool. And she was in Turkey at the yeah. time, which was great. <laughs> yeah, so she messaged me. Um, so I, I messaged Carla the other day and I'll just put this because it is, Good for people. And it goes back to a little bit of what I said before about I've had Christianity in my life in my life and I may have walked away from it slightly and I've come back and I can't see myself walking away from it again. Um but I did message Carla and I did thank her because Carla and Skeeter are husband of massive Christians over in Canada. Uh, and you couldn't you couldn't question the faith or fault the faith. Um but they've always been that constant faith role model do you know so and I, I did mess her and say if it wasn't for them and i've seen what faith can do for them then i may have never gone back to life church 12 months ago um, and just for people to kind of 
have them role models or keep, you know, just be mindful of them role models because they are the people that you will kind of fall back to at one point. And they, probably somebody's got one somewhere within a family unit or a circle of friends, that constant Christian role model. And I suppose as Christians, that what we that's what we're trying to be into. We don't want we don't need to shout out and kind of go, here we are. Just being a good Christian speaks volumes without having to say anything real. Yeah, there's an old um, old translation of the Bible, but one of the lines is, by your fruit will you be known. And I think that's yeah. so true because we can shout Jesus. Yes, there's a, there's a place for that, but we can live Jesus. And if we live Jesus, mm. it, it it exudes to other people. I heard yeah. it once talked about a fragrance, like a perfume. You can kind of smell uh-huh. the fragrance of Jesus on others. You, you can yeah. you can sense yeah. it and breathe it in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and she said she was praying for you. That. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but those prayers, absolutely. She said she was praying for you, so she was like an answer to prayer. It wasn't just... There is a story cool. about... Yeah, there is a story about Carla praying for us as well, actually, and it's one of the T-shirt designs. And the T-shirt design come from Sarah's, and she was hoping to wear it today, but it's actually... Still in transit. It's still in transit. <laughs> it will be here probably as soon as we end this call. Um, but do you want to explain the T-shirt? No, because I can't pronounce the word. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so again, so right at the beginning when we were doing the Talking Jesus course, um, and there was um, there was a phrase used that God loves recycling. Makes all things new. And loves, and I just thought, you know what, that's really good. I, I like that. I like that. It's kind of stuck with me. But then we got talking about, and I can't pronounce it either, but you might be able to help us. Um, if not, email Pete Baker at Life Church and he will tell you exactly. <laughs> um, but in the Japanese China culture, they use a gold liquid for fixing things and they pour it into Kintsugi. the cracks. That's the one. <laughs> um, so, and it makes all things new and beautiful. Um, so, and that stuck with Sarah. So then we've made a design. So, yeah, it's a crucifix with cracks through it where Roxanne's designed um, and, filled it with the gold. and filled it with the gold and then it's obviously got the verse scripture um, on the front of the t-shirt yeah, yeah it's so, one of my favorites that I've not been able to warn yet so then <laughs> so we produced that design and then put it out there um, and then Carla from Canada she's like Anthony I need to tell you this story she says I stayed in bed this morning I've been reading the bible and I was praying for you and the family and I was praying for God to pour oil into your lives and pour it into the cracks and the wounds to help you heal and make you better again. She says, and then you've put that design out today. She says, so God, God is speaking to us. Yeah, um, he's working. So, yeah, he's working. The beautiful thing about that uh, that pottery thing is it isn't just making it the same. It actually is increasing yeah. the value because yeah. it's not yeah. just fixing it. It's fixing it like gold plus, you know, literally gold. Yeah. So it's more yeah. valuable than before. And that's yeah. that's the life of transformation I can see in you guys from just a short conversation. I can see the darkness I can see the light being switched on and I can see you wanting to share that light with others, which is so powerful. Are you going to do more stuff through Life Church now, through helping other people? I mean, you've got Holy okay, Spirit. So but... I started uh, serving in the cafe, so do the brews, coffee, teas, to- toast. Yeah. Uh, Roxanne's joined me on that as well. Um, our youngest Bobby, he wants to do the production team. He's just not quite old enough yet, but he helps with our kids. So he's supported, so he, so he helps. Mm. And then Roxanne helps with like the noise. Um, and Roxanne actually, and this is another good, good one to mention. So next weekend she goes to um, Amplify, Amplify um, which is a Christian um, evangelist uh, weekend for young children, 11 to or 14 to 17, I think it is. Um, so she's signed up to that. So she wants to go and try and help find yourself and connect with God a little bit more. So that's is really positive. Yeah. Okay. Without us cramping. <laughs> well, it's, it's, that's the important part. Let me ask you this question then. So before um, what we call in the normal now, I suppose, what was a Sunday morning like for you or a weekend? And what's it like now? What What's the biggest difference you've seen perhaps on your weekend from what was to what is now? <laughs> I think more family time. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, me and Sarah didn't go out a lot, but we did. I don't know, once a month, once a weekend. Uh, but when we did, we drunk hard, and Sundays were a write-off, so kids knew that they were having a blanket day, uh, <laughs> watching films and eating takeaways. Whereas now, we haven't really even got that 
is well, we don't want to go out, do we? No. Um, <laughs> so um, we don't go out. We've got a lot more family time. It's all kind of committed around church, isn't it? Gearing up in the morning to go to church. Um, and even some Sundays, we then go to another church over in Manchester, Audacious Church, um, of a Sunday evening. Yeah. Afterwards. And then we might go to church there in Manchester and then go for something to eat after as a family. Wow. That's a huge but, transformation, uh, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, on, I do something with church on a, we do Alpha course on a Monday at the moment. On a Tuesday, I go to 12 Steps Recovery, um, which is um, the 12 Steps of Recovery. If you like, for anything, a lot of people think it's about addiction, but it can be for anxiety, depression, um, suicide thoughts, um, grief, anything. It's not just addictions that people can go to that 12 Steps for. So I do that on a Tuesday. We have Wednesdays off. Thursday, we go to live groups. The kids go to a group on a Friday. We have Saturdays off. And then we go to church again on a Sunday. So it's just kind of, but it keeps us busy. It keeps us happy. It keeps us around good, grounded people. Um, and you can just see God chipping away and kind of helping and saying, yes, I'm here. I will help you. Just keep going. And um, so it's great, really. That's where we've got to finish that line right there. That's perfect, <laughs> isn't it? Just give us your website one more time for the for the clothing. So it's www.holyscript.co.uk. And I think on the socials of so Facebook and Instagram, I think it's Holy Script Clothing. Fine. Okay. Well, we'll link to that as well. Um, I'm guessing what you do a good range of sizes for people if they want to know. Can we get asked? You know, I'm um, smaller, I'm thicker. Small, extra small. Uh, small or extra small. Um, and then it goes up to 3XL. Cool. That's a good range. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm I'm really um really encouraged myself just talking to you today, which is brilliant. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for sharing some of your story. Um, and yeah, and I hope and pray it, it helps somebody else so it's a light on in their own life, really. Um, so yeah. thank you for sharing that. Really appreciate it. And thank if there's you. anybody, yeah, so if there is anybody that is struggling and they don't know who to talk to, then if they want to message us privately, it will be kept private and we can try and help them and point them in the right direction. I'll give some advice. We have been through it. Yeah, you've been through it. And most importantly, you've, you've come out the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Isaiah 43 is my favorite scripture. First few verses I was given it when I was uh, given a Christian and I became a Christian at seven. And one of those is when you go through the fire, he will be with you. When you go through the floods, he will be with you. Not you yeah. get to skip it, but actually yeah. he'll be there with you as you go through it. And it's so tremendous to see he's come through for you guys, as I know he would and he will. So thank you. Right. I will let you get on with your day. I appreciate it. Right. God bless. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.